So let's let's talk about some conclusions here and let's fill them in because the whole goal of this, what I'm going to have you do today is I'm going to give you this function right here and it doesn't have an equation to it. Okay, it's a piecewise function. It doesn't have an equation. Yeah, it's making sure you can figure out the equation. But I'm just going to give you the graph and I'm going to ask you to do some transformations. Uh, with that, so we need to understand what these general uh, forms here, what do they actually do to the graph, okay? So, um, whenever we had a function and we were plugging in negative x, okay, so like with the absolute value, instead of the absolute value of x, we had the absolute value of negative x. Now that one didn't actually change anything, that has to do with the symmetry of this function. Um, but it did change things with e to the x and with the square root of x. How did it change things? How did it change things when we changed it from the square root of x to the square root of negative x? What happened to the graph? It flips it, okay? So f of negative x um, flips over the y-axis, okay? It flips over the y-axis, um, so all of your positive x values, their y values are now on the negative side, and all your negative y values are now on the positive side, okay? Um, do what? Well, the absolute value, because it's symmetric, it doesn't actually change, because the left side is the exact same thing as the right side. Same thing with x squared. Okay, x squared is symmetric, the left side of the graph looks exactly like the right side of the graph, so if you flip it, you're just ending up with the exact same thing you started with, okay? Um, so actually, while we're talking about that, those are two examples of a, um, what we call an even function, okay? Those are two examples of an even function. So um, down there I've got even functions and odd functions. So an example, these aren't the only ones, but an example is the absolute value of x, x squared. Okay, those are both even functions. Uh, now, you do need to write down this notation right here. f of negative x is equal to f of x. Now, that looks really, really weird, okay? But let's talk about it for a second. If x, pick a number for x. Somebody pick a number for x. Five. five. Okay, I heard five first. So... Is this a true statement? If we're talking about the absolute value of x, is f of negative 5 the same value as f of positive 5? Yeah, they're both 5, right? If we're talking about x squared, f of negative 5 is 25, f of positive 5 is 25, okay? So that's what it means to be an even function. When you plug the negative x value in, you get the exact same result as when you plug in the positive x value. Um, so algebraically, <clears throat> excuse me, if we were trying to prove this, if f of x, if our function was the absolute value of x, and we were trying to show that that's an even function, we would put negative x in for positive x, and then we would simplify that. Well, technically you can kind of, um, with absolute values, bless you, you can separate the coefficient from the variable. Okay, so negative x can be expressed as the absolute value of negative 1 times the absolute value of x. Well, the absolute value of negative 1 is just positive 1. So the absolute value of negative x is the exact same thing as the absolute value of x. That's how you would show that algebraically. You would plug negative x into the uh, expression, simplify it, and show that it's the exact same thing as the original function. So we could do the same thing <clears throat> with x squared. Okay, so f of negative x, if we plug in negative x where we see x, when we use square negative x, you just get positive x squared. So that is the original function, so that's why x squared is also an even function. And even functions are symmetric about the y-axis.
Okay? So that's what you should have written under even functions there on the table. <coughs> we'll talk about odd functions here in a minute. Okay, let's go back up to our conclusions. So that was what happens when we plug in negative x. It flips it over the y-axis. Uh, what happened yesterday when we put a negative in front of the function? So, for example, negative absolute value of x, or negative square root of x, or negative x squared, what happened to all the graphs? Flips over the x-axis. Um, or because f of x, remember f of x just represents y, so you can kind of look at this as negative y, so it changes the sign of all the y values. So um, all the ones that we were dealing with yesterday were positive y values, okay? but if we had some that were negative, then under this transformation, negative f of x, those negative y values would become positive y values. All right, then we looked at, well, what happens if we add a number to our x? So the absolute value of x plus 3, or the square root of x plus 3, or e to the x plus 3. What happens to those functions? Mm -hmm. Not that one. No, not that one. So, let's see here. Okay, here it is. Yes, it shifted it. Which way? To the left. To the left, however many units it was. So, whenever you're adding something to the x in your equation, then it is going to shift it um, horizontally. The opposite than what you would think. Okay, now what I mean by that is if it's plus, we would expect it to go to the right, but it actually goes to the left, okay? Um, <clears throat> so plus C is C uh, to the left, minus C would be C units to the right. The absolute value of x plus 3 shifted the absolute value of x left 3 units. Uh, x minus 3 would have shifted it 3 units to the right. Okay, so what happens if that plus c isn't with the x? What if it's just stuck on the end of the function? What happened to those? It goes up on the y because, think about it this way, f of x represents y, so we are adding c units to all of our y values. So it's where we started and it's moving them that many units <coughs> uh, to on the y values, okay? So this is a vertical shift. C units in the expected direction. So adding C does move it up. Minus C is down. Now, before we talk about um, when we multiply, um, I haven't really gone back to talk about the domain range. Okay, let's talk about which of these affect our domains and ranges. Okay, <clears throat> so depending on the function, okay, these will affect it in different ways. So if we are flipping the function over the y-axis. Is that going to affect domain or range? Range. Mm -hmm. We're flipping it over the y-axis. 
Okay. Good point. If we're talking about the square root of x, okay, we're used to that just having positive values or positive x values. We flip that over the y-axis, then all of a sudden we're talking about negative x values. We don't have any more positive x values. Um, <clears throat> so because that affects the x right here, the negative x, that's going to affect the domain. Okay, um, may affect the domain, and I say may because um, if your domain is all real numbers, it's it's not going to change that. Okay, it's only if you have a restricted domain will it change that, and so if you flip over the axis, then it's going to flip it around. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so the square root of x was 0 to infinity. If we flip that over, that's negative infinity to 0. All right. um, <clears throat> negative f of x, which one is that going to potentially affect? The range, because we're changing the y values. We're changing the y values. Um, so I'm just going to write domain and range on here because it, it kind of differs from function. If we shift it horizontally, okay, that's back to the domain, and it's going to shift your domain the same way that it, it shifted the, the function. So, for example, the square root of x was from 0 to infinity. So if we move that three units left, instead of being from 0 to infinity, it's going to be from negative 3 to infinity. Okay, so whatever you shift, it shifts the domain as well, uh, that amount. Same thing with f of x plus c, that's going to affect the range. And if you have a restricted range, then it's going to shift whatever units. Uh, for example, x squared, okay, x squared was from 0 to positive infinity. But if we shift that down 5 units, that's going to go from negative 5 to positive infinity. Okay? Alright, so, and notice, okay, when it's inside the parentheses here, these are all affecting the domain because it's changing the x values. When it's outside of the f of x, these are all affecting y values, so it's going to affect your range. Alright, so last, uh, last two here. <coughs> We have f of c times x. What did that do? What did that do to our problem? If we had that two value of two x, it looks like this. It, it changes the, the angle, the steepness, however you want to describe it. <clears throat> um, but this is a uh, horizontal. It's either a stretch or a shrink. Okay. Um, I, I said it's either or. Okay. <clears throat> it's either a stretch or it's a shrink. It depends on what C is. Okay. Uh, now, like the other ones, <clears throat> it's kind of the opposite of what we expect. With the shifts, negative is right and positive is left. <clears throat> With the horizontal stretch or shrink, if that is a number that's bigger than one, we would expect that to you know, make things bigger and for it to be a stretch. It's actually a shrink. Okay, for example, the absolute value of 2x. This blue one right here is more narrow than our original. Okay, that shrunk it horizontally even though we're multiplying by 2. Okay, so this is also, um, mm, let me just write it this way. If C is less than 1 or bigger than 0, like make sure the absolute value, okay, <clears throat> then that is a stretch. It's going to stretch things out. If uh, the absolute value of C is greater than 1, it's actually going to shrink. And again, if you have a restricted domain, that may be affected uh, by this. Well, if you have a restricted domain. 